ที่เลยซึ่งเป็นการจัดงานที่อยู่ในระบบของทั้งรูปแบบออนไลน์ที่หน้าง,งานจริงๆแล้วก็มีระบบออนไลน์ครับ So before we proceed to today opening ceremony I would love to say thank you for all of you for joining us During this pandemic, I would love to say that it might be very tough time that we would join in the international conference. But this year is such a very exclusive conference and very very spe special with our distinguished keynote speaker because we host this conference combining with the on-site at a platform in the university at Mahasalakam University and also with the online. Thank you guys very much for joining us today. นะครับซึ่งอีกสักครู่ก่อนที่เราจะเข้าสู่ช่วงพิธีงานเปิดงานอย่างเป็นทางการนะครับก็ผมขอใครอนุญาตนําเสนอแล้วก็ชี้แจงระบบขั้นตอนการประชุมตารางงานต่างๆนะครับซึ่งอีกสักครู่เราจะเข้าสู่ช่วงงานพิธีการเปิดงานอย่างเป็นทางการในช่วงเวลา9ก้าโมงจนถึง9ก้าโมงสานาทีนะครับและเราก็จะเริ่มเซสชันแรกในการบรรยายเมื่อตอน9ก้าโมงสานาทีจนถึง10บโมงสินาทีนะครับแล้วเราก็จะมีการพักเบรกนะครับผมขอบพระทัยครับเราจะเริ่มการประชุมเมื่อตอนที่10บโมงยีนาทีนะครับแล้วจะเบรกตอน1 1บเอโมงสินาทีนะครับเป็นเวลา15นาทีหลังจากนั้นเราจะเริ่มการนําเสนอหัวข้อบรรยายใหม่อีกครั้งหนึ่งนะครับแล้วก็จะพักเที่ยงเป็นเวลาเที่ยงตรงส่วนในช่วงภาคบ่ายนะครับส่วนรายละเอียดต่างๆภาคบ่ายเราจะแบ่งเซสชันในการเข้าสัมมนาการเข้าประชุมทั้งหมดเป็น3หัวข้อด้วยกันรายละเอียดต่างๆเดี๋ยวเราจะแจ้งให้ทราบอีกสักครู่หนึ่งนะครับ All right, ladies and gentlemen. Before we proceed to today official opening ceremony, I would love to take this opportunity to inform all of you today to today event agenda. So after opening ceremony after 19:30, we will be a very interesting topic presented by our exclusive keynote, Professor Dr. Takeshi Kobayashi, Department of Infection Disease. Control Faculty of Medicine, Oida University, Japan, entitled "Host Immune Response to to Pox Plasma Gonorrhea Infection," and then we will have a very short break, 15 minute breaks, and we will see each other after that at 5 a.m. 15 in the topic of diagnostic for parasitic pox bone disease pigs regarding one health platform. Presented by our another interesting keynote speaker, Dr. Wanapon Putana, Vice Dean of Faculty of Agriculture, National University of Laos. ครับผมซึ่งอีกสักครู่เราจะเข้าสู่ช่วงพิธีการเปิดงานอย่างเป็นทางการนะครับต้องบอกเลยว่าปีนี้ต้องขอบคุณแขกท่านผู้มีเกียรติทุกท่านที่ได้เข้าร่วมงานของเราในปีนี้นะครับท่ามกลางสถานการณ์โควิดที่ยากลำบากแต่ทุกท่านก็ยังเข้าร่วมงานงานของเราเป็นอย่างดีนะครับรู้สึกว่าทางทีมงานแล้วก็ท่านประธานของเราจะพร้อมแล้วนะครับครับผมเพื่อไม่ให้เป็นการเสียเวลาเนื่องในโอกาสอันสมควรแล้วก็ผมขออนุญาตนำทุกท่านนะครับเข้าสู่ช่วงพิธีการเปิดงานอย่างเป็นทางการครับ All right ladies and gentlemen on this auspicious time without fault to do I would love to call l a v o n and invite our professor Dr Anong Rit k h a n k a n Vice President for Infrastructural Development Research and Innovation to be on the stage to deliver an opening ceremony, and also Assistant Professor m a t n a g a t i n t a r a k a m h a n g Assistant Professor Dean Faculty of Veterinary Science, Mahasalakam University, to be on the stage as well and give us a remarkable opening ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming. Please welcome, l i n c h e n k a m Exciting theme on this year: update on infectious diseases, challenges, and opportunities for veterinary practice has reflected our pride in being a leading 
veterinary school for community, especially the problem of livestock farmers and all animal owners. The program consists of the invite speakers from many countries, the invite speakers from many universities and organizations in Thailand with very strong collaboration. The conference will be on various topics in companion medicine, survival medicine, poultry meat production management, exotic animal practice, aquatic animals, small and large ruminants that related to current problems on infectious disease, emerging disease, and how to manage any endemic disease in Thailand. I fully supported by Mahasakam University. Our organizing and scientific committee had attained much effort to make this conference the most beneficial and meaningful. We would like to invite all participants to take this opportunity to fully learn and exchange your experience and knowledge on current infectious diseases in animals in Thailand and neighboring countries. Our valuable contribution of the keynote speaker, invited speaker, the presenters, and the participants in attendance at this conference forum are greatly appreciated. Without your contribution, this conference would not be possible. Please forgive us for any short, shortcoming, inconvenience, or uncomfortable situation that may arise during the conference. Our hope is that everything will run short, smoothly. The organizing committee looks forward to welcoming you all and we will do our best to make your participation a successful and to achieve satisfaction. Good morning, distinguished guests, respect colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Mahasalakam University, it is my great pleasure to sincere welcome for all of you to the fifth MSU International Veterinary Conference update on infectious disease, challenge and opportunity for veterinary practice from June. 9 to 10, 2021, organized by faculty of veterinary science of Mahasalakam University. We are the right to organize the, this conference as the platform of for a researcher, veterinary practitioner in the field of animal health and production, as well as the other related field. The organized committee have been working intensive to put the whole program together for the knowledge and happiness of the participants. At the present, human, animal health and production are close related. Many diseases from animal can be transmitted to human and vice versa. This conference aims to be a forum for exchange, dissemination of a new knowledge among the participants, and for the construction of a research collaboration between the researcher and researching institute in both domestic and international level. We would like to invite you to participate in this moment of events so you can exchange your expertise on animal health and production. All of your contribution and comments during this conference will be beneficial for our collaboration in future research. Finally, we are grateful and thanks on the distinctive speakers and participants for their valuable presentation and wish that you will obtain the full benefit 
of the scientific program have more relationship with scientists in the related area, make a new friendships and collaboration, and enjoy our warm Thai virtual hospitality. Best wish for a fruitful and enjoyable conference. Thank you. ครับผมขอกราบขอบพระคุณท่านรองอธิบการบดีและท่านพิท่านประธานในพิธีเป็นอย่างสูงครับและในลำดับขั้นตอนต่อไปรวมขอเรียนเชิญท่านประธานในพิธีร่วมถ่ายภาพเป็นที่ระลึกบริเวณกลางเวทีครับขอเรียนเชิญครับ I very big thank you for the our vice president and also our representative to give us such a very remarkable opening ceremony and may I request you to remain on the stage in order for good photo please welcome ครับผมซึ่งอีกสักครู่หลังจากเสร็จขั้นตอนพิธีการเปิดงานอย่างเป็นทางการแล้วเราก็จะนําทุกท่านนะครับเข้าสู่ช่วงสําคัญของงานในวันนี้เลยก็ว่าได้นะครับซึ่งเป็นการบรรยายหัวข้อพิเศษนะครับซึ่งในช่วงภาคเช้านั้นเราจะมีคีย์โน้ตสปีกเกอร์และก็ผู้บรรยายทั้งหมด2ท่านด้วยกันครับและมีหัวข้อที่น่าสนใจทั้งหมดด้วยกัน2หัวข้อซึ่งเราจะแบ่งเวลาออกเป็นทั้งหมด5้าโมงครึ่งนะครับจนถึง10บโมงสินาทีหลังจากนั้นเราจะเบรกเป็นเวลา15นาทีนะครับแล้วเราก็จะนำเสนออีกหนึ่งข้อที่น่าสนใจมากๆนะครับและหลังจากนั้นเราจะพักรับประทานอาหารเที่ยงจนถึงบ่ายโมงตรงและเข้ารายงานอีกครั้งหนึ่งเมื่อบ่ายโมง30นาทีแล้วก็จะแบ่งห้องเป็นเซสชันย่อยๆในภาคบ่ายนะครับ Alright ladies and gentlemen now we are approaching to the main rapture described but right now I would love to call law up on everybody everyone to join the good photo on the stage please welcome Well, I would love to take this opportunity to invite all of our distinguished guests online at home right now. At the main conference room, we are having a group photo, which is quite like traditional and cultures in Thailand. That every time that we have an opening ceremony, we will also have a group photo in order to be as a very remarkable opening ceremony. Just take a few minutes. และอีกสักครู่ครับหลังจากการมอบหลังจากการถ่ายภาพที่ลึกร่วมกันแล้วนะครับขอเรียนเชิญท่านประธานในพิธีนะครับมอบของที่ระลึกไว้นะครับสักครู่หนึ่งนะครับ Alright during the opening ceremony group photo I would love to inform our today event agenda so in a few minutes we will approach to the topic of Professor Doctor Professor Dr. Takachi Kobayashi, Department of Infection Disease Control, Faculty of Medicine, Oida University, Japan, and title host immune response to toxoplasma gonia infections. ครับซึ่งในลำดับต่อไปขอเรียนเชิญท่านประธานในพิธีมอบของที่ระลึกครับขอบคุณท่านประธานในพิธีนี้เป็นอย่างสูงครับผมขอเรียนเชิญท่าน
All right, ladies and gentlemen, on this auspicious time, without further ado, we are now approaching to the official lecture of the 5th MSU International Veterinary Conference. On this auspicious time, may I call upon Professor Dr. Takechi Kobayashi, Department of Infection Disease Control, Faculty of Medicine, Oida University from Japan, to present a very interesting topic, host immune response to top post plasma cornea infection. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming. Please welcome. Can I start? Sawade, sawade cup. Definitely, please can, welcome. Can you hear me? Okay. So, uh, good morning, guys. Um, I'd like to set up my slide. Uh, hold on a second, please. ครับซึ่งช่วงในระหว่างการสรับสไลด์นะครับซึ่งอีกสักครู่เราจะมีเวลาในการนําเสนอทั้งหมดจนถึง 10:15 Okay, good morning everyone. So, thank you very much for introduction. I appreciate uh, having the opportunity uh, to talk my uh, recent work uh, at the conference. Hold on a second. Okay, sorry about that. Oh, so I appreciate having the opportunity to give a talk in MSU International Veterinary Conference. I'd like to express my appreciation to the organizers of this meeting. Hold on a second. Oh, okay. So, uh, are they? Oh, okay. Ah, okay. So, I have visited Mahasarakam University with my colleague in 2019. I met uh, Wapo Sensei, Nana Sensei, and Gerard Sensei. Now we have Faison and Iveson as PhD students with Japanese government mixed scholarship. Uh, we visited a temple and prayed for, for peace in the world and uh, got the Saishin uh, that I still put in my wrist. So first of all, uh, let me uh, introduce Oita City briefly. Uh, Oita Prefecture is located in Kyushu Island, west part of Japan. Oita is a, a middle-sized, calm and beautiful city in Japan. Particularly, Oita is famous for the hot spring or onsen. And Oita is also an old city with many uh, historical temples and shrines. So today I'm going to talk about the Toxoplasma gondii and the immune response. Toxoplasma gondii is an uh, obligate intercellular protozoan parasite uh, responsible for toxoplasmosis. Uh, they infected warm blood animal, including many mammals and birds. More than a billion people or, or one third hu humans carry toxoplasma and five to 10 million people in Japan uh, are reported. And toxi toxoplasma gondii infection is typically asymptomatic in immunocompromised 
comp competence uh, hosts. However, uh, uh, Toxoplasma gondii, uh, uh, however, serious disease, nam namely Toxoplasmosis, can occur most frequently in the setting of immunosuppression of a congenital infection. Can I make it small? Okay, here is a movie of Toxoplasma gondii mm -hmm. from Scientific American. You can see uh, uh, parasites inside the cells. Basically, they are quiet in our body unless our immune system is suppressed. So let's take a look at the uh, life cycle of Toxoplasma. The definitive host of, for, of Toxoplasma gondii are uh, domestic cats and their relatives. And unspore-related oocytes are shed in the cat species. Oocytes take uh, one to five days to sporulate in the environment and become infective. Uh, intermediate hosts uh, such as rodents become infected after ingestion of uh, uh, soil, water, uh, plant material contaminated with oocytes, oocysts. Oocyst transforms into tachyzoid shortly after ingestion. And the tachyzoid localizes in the brain and the uh, uh, muscle uh, and develop into tissue cyst containing bladyzoid here. And the cats become infected after eating the intermediate hosts. Animals bred for human consumption uh, also become infected with the cyst after ingestion of sporulated oocytes. Human can become infected by any of the several roots, or let's say uh, eating un uncooked food, uh, uncooked meat of animals harboring the cysts, eating food or drinking water contaminated with uh, cat feces, and uh, transplacentary from mother to fetus. So congenital toxoplasmosis is a spe specific form of toxoplasmosis in which a fetus is infected via the placenta. If a pregnant woman had already experienced to be infected with toxoplasma, the fetus would be uh, protected from infection because of mother's immunity. However, if a pregnant woman became infected for the first time just before, or during, the, during her pregnancy, she can pass the infection to her unborn baby. That causes a miscarriage and a stillborn baby. A child born with signs of congenital toxoplasmosis is hydrocephaly, chorioretinitis, intracerebral calcification, and mental retardation. Thus, a uh, pregnant woman should avoid handling cat uh, ritters and eating poorly cooked food. Uh, by the way, have you ever had Torch syndrome? Torch syndrome refers to infection of developing fetus or newborn by any of a group of infectious agents, including toxoplasmosis, rubella, cytomegalovirus, helper simplex, and others. Torch syndrome causes a disease with similar symptoms in affected newborns, including fever, difficulties feeding, small bleeding under the skin, yearish discoloration of the skin, enlargement of river and spring, hearing impairment, abnormalities, of the eyes and so on. So please remember that toxoplasmosis is included in torch syndrome. In adult cases, toxoplasma gondii often do not develop symptoms in healthy individuals because of their immune system. However, the parasites remain in the body in an inactive state 
forming a cyst, and they can be reactivated when the immune system fails to control the pathogen. For example, persons who acquire HIV infection causes toxoplasmosis accompanied with symptoms including fever, confusion, headache, uh, seizures, nausea, and poor coordination. Here is a toxoplasmic encephalitis, which is an opportunistic infection found in immuno immunocompromised patients, such as AIDS patients. You can see the cerebral mass region here and here. Okay, so our, our immune system employs roughly two different strat strategies for clearance of infectious agents. For uh, multiple uh, multicellular parasites or helminths, eugenophils and mast cells release toxic granule proteins, which called uh, granulation. On the other hand, single-celled organisms uh, or protozoa, uh, such as uh, Toxoplasma gondii, are eradicated by the ingestion of macrophages, which is called phagocytosis. To fully activate the phagocytosis of macrophages, interferon gamma produced by Th1 type T cells or natural killer cells is required. To fully differentiate into the Th1 cells or NK cells, IL-12 produced by dendritic cells is required. Moreover, to fully mature DC to produce IL-12, uh, recognition of pathogen-associated molecular patterns or PAMPs uh, from the embedded pathogen by pattern recognition receptor, such as toll-like receptor on DC is required. So today I'd like to talk about two signal molecules. One is STAT1, the other is TRAF6. STAT1 transmits the signal from interferon gamma receptor and TRAF6 emanates a signal from toll-like receptors. So far, it has been clearly demonstrated that interferon gamma and IL-12 are necessary for er uh, eradicating the toxoplasma gondii. When you look at the control of toxoplasma gondii during the course of infection, macrophages are important effector cells for the clearance of toxoplasma gondii at the acute, acute phase. As I mentioned before, Toxoplasma gondii often do not develop symptoms in healthy individuals because of their immune system. So in chronic phase, Toxoplasma stay quiet as bladizoid in insists. Once immune suppression occurred, however, the parasites are reactivated and become tachyzoids. And uh, uh, tachyzoids which can divide quickly and act actively invade host cells. In, in 1989, Suzuki and his colleague have demonstrated that interferon gamma critically regulates the replication of toxoplasma gondii in the central nervous system. Toxoplasma infection, uh, toxoplasma infected, let's see. Toxoplasma infected mice didn't show many parasites in the brain, while uh, uh, treatment with anti-interferon gamma antibody induced reactivation of toxoplasma in the brain, suggesting that interferon gamma is required for parasite control in chronic phase. So the question is what are brain resident cells involved in the in interferon gamma pathway? So the central nervous system is isolated from the immune system by the blood-brain barrier, or BBB, which is known as immune privilege. Normally, the central nervous system is protected from the en entry of pathogens, circulating immune cells, and factors within the blood by physical BBB. 
Thus, immune system in the CNS is different from that in our body. The brain, in the brain, uh, conventional macrophages and uh, T cells are not re residing. Instead, astrocytes and uh, microglial cells are located. So we decided to focus on astrocytes in the brain. Astrocytes play a key role in immune, uh, numerous functions uh, within the CNS, uh, including uh, neuroprotection, immune regulation, and antimicrobial activities. To examine whether interferon gamma regulates astrocytes during the course of toxoplasma infection, regenerated astrocyte specific traps uh, stat one deficient mice. So our motivating question is, is the interferon gamma stat one pathway critical for astrocyte function in toxoplasmosis? To create astrocyte specific stat one knockout mice, we crossed GFAP curry mice with stat one fluxed mice. We infected knockout and control mice with toxoplasma cysts and found that all stat one knockout mice uh, died within a month. When you look at the brain, uh, you can see many uh, tachyzoids in stat one knockout mice. Basically, uh, tachyzoids are uh, never found in astrocytes, but in the neurons in wild type mice. However, we could detect uh, tissue cysts in astrocytes in stat one knockout mice. These results clearly demonstrated that astrocyte specific stat one knockout mice are susceptible to toxoplasma gondii infection, and suggest that astrocytes activated by interferon gamma stat one pathway control parasite replication and the cyst formation in the CNS. And although or, or, or interferon gamma production in the whole brain of infected mice was not affected in stat one knockout mice, the production was less defective in CD8 killer T cells. Moreover, Expression of inhibitory receptors such as PD1, LAG3, TGIT on CD8 T cells was upregulated in the brain of knockout mice, suggesting that those T cells were exhausted. Thus, STAT1 in astrocytes uh, coordinates the local immune response by CTL to control toxoplasma gondii in the CNS. By the way, STAT1 transmits the signal uh, not only from interferon gamma receptor, but also from type 1 interferon receptor for interferon alpha beta. The signal transduction of interferon gamma depends on homodimer, homodimers of STAT1, while uh, uh, the signal from uh, type 1 interferon receptor uh, depends on uh, uh, STAT1, STAT2 heterodimers. So when we look at the expression of genes driven by both pathway, as well as interferon gamma specific pathway, uh, the expression levels in the brain were significantly reduced in knockout mice, which include uh, host resistance factor such as IRG and GBP. However, those driven by interferon alpha specific pathway were not, not the case. So it seems that interferon gamma pathway, but not interferon alpha beta pathway in astrocytes is a pivotal for the control of toxoplasma gondii. So to see if interferon alpha beta pathway is not involved in the control of toxoplasma gondii, we infected uh, interferon alpha receptor knockout mice with toxoplasma. However, unexpectedly, interferon alpha receptor knockout mice died around 50 days 
post infection showing uh, uh, showing more cyst formation in the brain. These results indicate that interferon alpha beta pathway partially contribute to control the parasites. So I'd like to summarize the first part of my talk. Start one signal. Start one signal in astrocyte plays a critical role in limiting the replication of an important opportunistic pathogen, toxoplasma. Particularly, interferon gamma pathway is critically controlling parasite replication and cyst formation uh, by inducing a uh, host resistance factor such as IRG and GBP. Uh, moreover, uh, coordinating immune regulation, including interferon gamma production and uh, inhibitory receptor expression in CTL. Okay. So next, I'd like to focus on another molecule, TRAP6. TRAP6 mediates signal from a whole bunch of pro-life receptors, which eventually activates transcription factor NF-kappa-B and AP1 to produce IL-12 in DC. Uh, it is known that a uh, component of toxoplasma is recognized by certain toll-like receptor family to initiate immune response to the to the parasites. So, what if TRAF6 in DC was absent? We infected dendritic cells, specific not TRAF6 knockout mice with Toxoplasma gondii. As expected. Uh, DC specific TRAF6 knockout mice were highly susceptible to Toxoplasma gondii infection. They died around 10 days post infection, showing a severe river injury, a severe river injury accompanied by a high parasite burden in the river, lung, and the spring. To examine our production by DC, we made bone marrow derived DC and infected them with toxoplasma in vitro. As you can see, a TRAF6 deficient DC were defective in IR12 production in response to toxoplasma infection. Moreover, DC specific TRAF6 knockout mice showed significant reduction of IR12 and interferon gamma in the serum as well as in the number of ultra producing DC in the peritoneal cavity. To examine if the initial, initial reduction of IL-12 in TRAF6 knockout mice is uh, responsible for the susceptibility to toxoplasma infection, we injected uh, recombinant IL-12 to the mutant mice. As you can see here, IL-12 IL-12 treatment could extend the survival period of DC-specific TRAF6 knockout mice. Administration of IL-12, IL-12 also rescued the interferon gamma production in the mutant mice. The same was true for the recombinant interferon gamma treatment. The survival period of mutant mice was prolonged by recombinant interferon gamma. Next question is, which cell type is responsible for interferon gamma production in the acute phase of toxoplasma infection? Recently, it has been reported that ILC1, one of innate lymphoid cells, is responsible for the RE interferon gamma production in response to some infectious agents. Thus, we hypothesize that ILC1 in DC specific TRAF6 knockout mice might be impaired in the production of interferon gamma due to reduced IL-12 production by DCs. When we look at the ILC1, which was identified by surface expression of uh, uh, lineage negative CD45 positive 
CD127 positive, NKP46 positive, DX5 negative, and NK1.1 positive. The production of interferon gamma was severely impaired in TRAF6 knockout mice. And injection, injection of IL-12, injection of IL-12 uh, could rescue the interferon gamma production by IRC1 in TRAF6 knockout mice, suggesting that IRC1 in disease-specific TRAF6 knockout mice is impaired in the production of interferon gamma due to reduced IL-12 production by DC. The same trend was observed for interferon gamma production by NK cells and CD4 T cells. When we measured interferon gamma protein by ELISA in the co-culture of IRC1 with DC stimulate with toxoplasma, substantial amount of interferon gamma was observed using wild type wild type DC, but not using a TRAF6 knockout DC. On the other hand, co-culture of neither NK cells nor T cells with toxoplasma stimulated DC produced a substantial amount of interferon gamma, suggesting that ILC1 is a major interferon gamma producer during acute toxoplasmosis. So, DC-specific TRAF6 knockout mice were highly susceptible to toxoplasma gondia. Impaired I-12 and interferon gamma production in knockout mice at three days post-infection. I-12 and interferon gamma treatment extend the survival period of the knockout mice. And the reduced interferon gamma production in IRC1, NK cells, and the CD4 T cells of Tuxoplasma gondii are infected knockout mice. In summary, TRAF6 in DCs positively regulates uh, IL12 production and uh, is uh, subsequently requirement required for interferon gamma production from ILC1, NK cells, and T cells during acute toxoplasmosis. Particularly, RC1 is a major source of interferon gamma in the early stage of infection. In the brain, interferon gamma STAT1 signal in astrocytes is a critically controlling parasite replication and cyst formation by inducing host resistance factors. Okay. So this work was mainly done by our former assistant professor Shinya Hidano at Chris Hunter Lab in UPenn, University of Pennsylvania in the United States and in our laboratory in Oito University. Thank you for your attention. I'll be glad to answer any questions. All right. So thank you very much for Professor Dr. Takashi Kobayashi. ก็ได้จบไปแล้วนะครับสําหรับการรายงานเมื่อสักครู่สําหรับช่วงนี้เป็นเซสชั่นในการถามคําถามใครมีคําถามอะไรถามได้เลยนะครับเซอร์สําห
して、こんにちは。先生、こんにちは。こんにちは、先生。先生、こんにちは。IP センターどうぞ。ありがとうございます。OK。アフィアスティロトンフォンファイターティーベテリナミスタイマンアカラカミノン。Thank you so much for your nice presentation for today. Um, I have one question that you present about the Gamma is very important for illumination of the plasma for the eye. So I want to know uh if you have ever been used in the viral gamma not just mine for uh to for the everything because you You told me about step one of plasmae and to use in the blood alpha to eliminate total plasma from the eye. And how about in the blood gamma? I'm sorry, sorry, I, I can't hear you clearly. Can you repeat again? Uh, how about in the blood gamma not plasmae? Mm. Have you ever been used in the film gamma not plasma to eliminate uh, also plasma from the eye? You mean the uh, did I did I infect yes, the yes. toxoplasma to uh, interfere on gamma not plasma? Yes. Uh, we never tried, but uh, it's already published in paper. So interfere on gamma is critical for the eradication of toxoplasma gondii. So the question is, uh, which type of cell is uh, critical in, in, in eradicating the toxoplasma? So we focused on uh, astrocytes in the brain. So people already know that the macrophage is very important for the eradication of parasites. But we found that uh, Astrocytes in the brain also contribute to the eradication of uh, toxoplasma. You got it? Yes, thank you. This is one question. Okay. Uh, as you told me about in brain, astrocytes are very important. How about in peripheral body? Uh, which there was cell is very important for eliminating toxoplasma from the eye. Okay. Stop. Okay. Peripheral. Yes. You mean the peripheral? Then the detail is very important and not on uh, monocyte. No. Oh. So in the peripheral, a macrophage and the monocytes uh, eradicate uh, those parasites. But as I mentioned, uh, uh, the immune system is totally different Uh, in the brain from our body. So the question is uh, how the immune system work in the central nervous system. That's the question in my first talk. So as you, as you pointed out, uh, macrophage DC monocytes in the periphery is very, very important. That's already known, okay? okay thank you very much, Sensei. Sure.
No more question. No question. Still, I have a sorry shin. Can you see? <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, are there any questions? Are there any questions more with this, with Professor Dr. Takeshi Kobayashi? Because we still have like 10 minutes left. We will still have time in order to ask. So, like people online, you can also join and have another questions as well. How is the COVID-19 situation in Mahasara come right now? Everybody okay? Everybody okay today. Okay, okay. <laughs> Only in Northeast of Thailand, but okay. not in the center of Thailand. Okay. Especially Bangkok. Bangkok. It's very difficult. I just may interrupt like for a while. So if anybody have any questions, you can type it in. You can leave the message up here and we will send to Professor Dr. Takashi Kwayashi. If you have any questions, you can ask me a question. I do not know the video of the musical. Good morning, Professor. Okay. Morning. How is the situation of COVID in Japan? Did you get vaccine yet? Uh, the vaccination got started, and, uh, and uh, I heard the uh, twenty percent of elder people have already got a shot, but not younger people. And we are very concerned to opening the Olympic game in Tokyo uh, in July. <laughs> this is the situation. But uh, uh, you know, uh, Oida city is a uh, 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 sort of uh, uh, suburb, so um, it's very calm and quiet. It's okay. Ha, similar like Thailand, Oida people is the priority first. So, well, ladies and gentlemen, we still have five minutes left. If you have any questions, we still continually ask. You also are variable to have another question platform, or you can type or leave the message. For our keynote speaker as well. Okay, since I have uh, five minutes more, so I'll show you yes. another slide uh, to how to make uh, uh, in, uh, knockout mice. Uh, just three slides. So, so I'll show you briefly how to make a uh, uh, knockout mice. 
So first, we use the embryonic stem cells to, to get the homologous recombinant uh, cells. First, we made the targeting vector, uh, which contains a homologous region in the genome. And then we trans transduce this uh, target gene to the embryonic stem cells and uh, select the uh, uh, certain mutant ES cells, and we injected the cells into the blast cyst, which is a five days old embryo of mice. Uh, スライドショーですね。これで。あ、ダメです。あ、ダメだね。あ、ダメか。なんでだろう。あ、オッケー。It uh, okay. doesn't work. Uh, movie doesn't work. But uh, we injected ES cells to the to the mouse embryo and got a chimeric mice. But uh, recently, uh, CRISPR-Cas9 system is develop, developed and we employed the system. Oh, okay. So we injected the uh, uh, guide RNA and the Cas9 enzyme into the mouse, mouse oviducts. Uh, I'll show you. So this is oviduct, this is ovary, uterus. So we injected the guide RNA and the Cas9 protein, which is uh, enzyme for the recombination. And then we charge the electric pulse directly to the oviduct. So this is electric device. And uh, charge uh, electric powers to the oviduct directory. So you can see bubbles after electroporation. And then the mice, mother mouse deliver uh, mutant mice naturally. This is our system. Okay, so that's it. Stop sharing. Well, all right, ladies and gentlemen, a very big thank you very much for our professor, Dr. Takashi Kobayashi, Department of Infection Disease Control, Faculty of Medicine, Oida University, Japan. I would love to say very thank you to you and we are all very appreciate for your interesting presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you.